Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video series on uh, EFT automation. Um, uh, th this, is, uh, this video is around the database checkpoints. Uh, in the, I did a video earlier where you might have seen where uh, we, we made a uh, call to the database, meaning we added a database checkpoint where it was running a, an SQL statement uh, where it was counting the number of records. So we were getting scalar back. Scalar in the sense we were getting one value back from the database. So then I thought maybe you know in real time you know counting is just one thing. Maybe you may get uh, more than one value from the database. So then how do you handle that situation? So the whole process is same. Let me go ahead and add another uh, database checkpoint here. Uh, this would be design checkpoint database and what I will do is use specify this one and this time what I'll do is I'll use the one that I created before uh, sample data the one new to that I created in the last video I'll pick that and for um, SQL statement what I'll do is I have um, an SQL statement here, what it does is it will pull um, all the records where the standard cost is less than three. See, that's the statement, less than three, and it'll pull the product name, name, uh, I mean, product ID, name, product number, and, uh, you know, the, the standard cost. So I'm going to copy this SQL statement go here, paste it here, um, and then I'll do finish. And as you can see, it, it bought those six records in here. If we go back to um, here, so if you see, okay. This is in the database, and this is the information that QDP or UFT pulled from the database. It's identical, okay? So once we have this, then what do we do? I mean, if you do OK, the system will save all this information as constant values. And by that, what I mean is let me go ahead and say OK. And uh, this is just like any other, uh, you know, value that we could, you know, either we're inputting to a field or pressing from, uh, you know, within the script primarily, right? You know, the, the information is there. It's not parameterized. So if I run the script, I mean, there shouldn't be any error because, you know, we just made a uh, query on the in the database and we just copied the SQL statement, so it should work just fine. Um, okay, that failed not because of our uh, database checkpoint that we added, which is table three, uh, DB table three. It's not because of this, by the way. It's uh, because of the other stuff. And see here, you can tell check 24, succeed at 24. Uh, what does that mean? We had six records. We know that we had six records, and then we have four columns. Six by four, six times four is 24. So you checked each value, each value. So now let me go ahead and minimize or close this. So I know why this is failing. This needs to be 36. This is from the other video. Now if you run everything should pass. But let me go into DD table underscore three. Click on this. That's the same thing that you know we use to parameterize a specific uh, record. So in order to parameterize this, um, 
unfortunately this is like a table but this will not be a table because it's a row that meaning what I mean that by that is let's say for example you want to parameterize this uh, of course you know one, one more thing if it is a, a if you see a blue tick mark meaning it, it's going to validate that I can pick the whole column and double click that way it unchecked everything uh, and we should uncheck this as well it doesn't uncheck at all uh, because it needs at least one value from the column okay and if you check back double click so you can do that with the whole column or in, even with the old row you can do that so it will not check the first row check everything so primarily this if you have blue a tick mark meaning it's going to check that cell uh, next if you want to parameterize let's say you want to parameterize the h70 instead of constant you do parameter and then it you know, it's a duty table 3 underscore row 1 underscore column 1 row 1 column 1 I'll just keep it uh, you know the way it is I'll switch to uh, uh, local action I already have a couple of columns there I can uh, that's used by other uh, uh, database checkpoint so we parameterize this one value that's here and then if I want to parameterize this I'll do click parameter local done same thing local done this, this price local done now um this is interesting that you know interesting point that you need to note if i try to parameterize this row two that doesn't mean that it's going to add another row here it will add another column instead and i'll explain you why so let me parameterize that first local look at it so it, it goes on adding you know it'll add a row there sorry i mean to say the column not row i mean if you uh, had watched the other video on the, the talks about uh, you know iterations uh, at the action level iterations at the script level and so if you set your environment right uh, this action which is action 5 if you have multiple records in it then if you let's say you have five records here let's say you know you um, let's assume that okay let me take it back let's assume that uh, these five six records here showed up as six records here so what does that mean according to the knowledge that we already gain if you have six records and if you set your action test properly then this action gets executed six times but this data you will get all the data within the initial run so it doesn't make any sense so when you start adding prior you know parameterizing this uh, multiple rows then every cell becomes a column in your a data sheet uh, this is a little bit of confusing for a lot of beginners so uh, you might want to you know kind of pause and think about it let me repeat uh, the whole thing again if you have multiple rows within your data sheet here what does that mean meaning your action has multiple pieces of information meaning to ex in order to execute that particular uh, action you need data from one row if you're using it but if there's another row that means the whole action gets iterated again uh, you know as uh, <coughs> I'm sorry uh, we saw that in uh, reservation when we had multiple records so for every record it was you know running the reservation to book a flight so if there were five records there, there it would book uh, five different tickets but here the, all this data is coming from just one call or one uh, interaction with the database or one run so that's the reason why when you try to parameterize each cell each cell shows up as columns so it's just one record that's what that's the reason why you know uh, QTP does it that way I hope I didn't confuse you uh, but you might want to uh, rewind and watch this section well let me close that so I just parameterized uh, just handful uh, let me go ahead and run it
it worked just fine so if you go to our data table 3 so it's still you know check 24 so there were about you know four or five uh, parameterized uh, values but the rest were all constants and you know here are the parameterized values well that's it about um, uh, working with a query where you get more than one value and uh, you know here not just one value we got we got six records technically and then we worked with it well that's it uh, about uh, database checkpoints um, you know originally this was not part of the other video and I just you know thought I should add one where I would have more than one piece of information you know coming from the query okay well that's it about the database checkpoints and I will see you in the next video